Well, one of the biggest spring games in the country on Saturday, the only one nationally televised. Are we going to learn anything about Kalen DeBoer's Alabama team? You are locked on college football, your daily podcast on all things college football. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On College Football. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and your daily source to stay up to date with the biggest stories in the greatest sport on planet Earth, crazy though it may be. Realignment, coaching carousel, the portal, and more. We've always got you covered. Plenty coming up on today's show, but Alabama's spring game is tomorrow, as in Saturday, the only one that is nationally televised, not even Colorado's game, will be on national television. Luke Robinson of Lockdown Alabama is joining me here. My number one question, as shall we call myself an Alabama outsider of sorts, is about Jalen Milrow and Kalen DeBoer and how those somewhat contrasting styles can fit. I think they can. I'm just curious as to how. Is that the biggest question for you for the Tide right now? It's certainly one of them. I think that, um, you know, Jalen Milrow is a puzzle wrapped in an enigma, right? I mean, it, Alabama fans, sometimes they don't know what to think about him. I mean, because he can have some mistakes, but I love me some Jalen Milrow. I really do. I think he stepped up so much in his leadership position last year. Certainly, he had some missteps. He is not Tua Tungavailoa. He's not Mac Jones. Um, he, he's not even Jalen Hurts. He's sort of a, an amalgam of all of them, but maybe not as good at any of them at the things they do best. Uh, but that's, I mean, you can't fault somebody for that. Jalen Milrow is still immensely talented. And I think it is hard to figure out exactly what to do with him. Meanwhile, Ty Simpson has played very well in the spring, but I always like to uh, temper expectations because Ty Simpson is going against the twos a lot of times. So I, I think there'll be still a section of folks that want Ty Simpson more or to get more action. And what I'm really going to be looking for when it comes to quarterback is not so much who's going to supplant Jalen Milrow. I think Jalen Milrow can be the guy, but I just want to see some improvement on, on in a few areas like uh, accuracy and in, in, uh, more intermediate passes, for instance. It, this will probably be one of the most viewed or consumed spring games in the country because you've got Alabama. It's on national TV. Kalen DeBoer's there. A lot of interest and intrigue there. But how much can you really expect to take away from a spring game? I, I'm in the camp that if you look at the right aspects of the game, you can have some pretty sizable takeaways, not everything, but a good chunk of what to expect in many areas for a team. How much can Alabama fans and the rest of the country learn about the Crimson Tide signal caller? I mean, I, I'm like you. I, I don't think that this is uh, something you really need to go into looking for a lot of answers. Like you may see – uh, Jalen Milrow make a throw or two and you go, oh, well, he couldn't do that last year. Or you may see a backup running back or backup receiver make a catch and go, hey, I hope he gets on the field a lot more. But, you know, there have been some guys that have done that in other spring break, spring games and they have just, it just doesn't come to fruition on the field. It's different when uh, you're playing another team, you're playing another team on the road, you know, so, things like that. It's just a whole nother atmosphere. I think it's more likely you can discover something if you are so inclined to be able to have access to the scrimmage before a day, the week before a day. Um, I think that scrimmage can tell you a lot more. Typically, the thing is that one's usually closed, so people don't get to see it. Um, a day and and all spring games are really sort of glorified scrimmages. I mean, it, it, and I, I know I'm saying that and it's cliche in the sense that it's already a scrimmage. We know that, but it's um, it, it's dumbed down a little bit. And um, I think sometimes fans get too excited about these. And frankly, it, you're not going to learn a bunch, I don't believe, but it's football. I'm happy to have it because college basketball is now over. And after this spring game, whew, it's going to be a rough few months for yours truly well it, it certainly is a long time between the football that matters and the day that this show airs and most people are listening to or watching it but it is what we have to work with right now I think you just have to take it with you know a, a grain of salt of sorts who's Jalen Milrow going to be throwing the football to this year well I think uh, Jeremy Bernard is a guy that people are going to want to pay attention to this is a transfer over from 
Washington. He was, you know, third, fourth option in Wash at Washington, but they had some dudes last year, and I think they liked him a lot. So I feel like he's going to get a lot of action. Obviously, Kobe Prentice has a lot of uh, experience with this squad, and um, I think he's going to have an opportunity to do some things. But the guy that I'm waiting on the most, and, and I have no problem saying this, is uh, Ryan Williams. Yep. I'm, I'm a huge Ryan Williams fan. Anybody who watches Locked on Bama will tell you I might be – a bigger Ryan Williams fan than anybody who's related to Ryan Williams. <laughs> uh, I've gotten to call on several of his games. I've gotten to see him in, in different uh, arenas, and, and I've gotten to see him in different aspects and in different positions, and uh, he's just always dominant. It just doesn't matter. And it's, he's going to be a, a youngster. He's give, he's missing his whole senior year and, and enrolling early, but I think he can come in and be an absolute star, but he's just unfortunately not going to be at this 8 day game. Alabama has got a really good defensive staff. I, I think, oddly enough, with Coach Huff and Coach Grubb going to uh, my Seahawks in the NFL, you could argue that Alabama's staff is stronger on the defensive side than on the offensive side, which is not a slight of Kalen DeBoer. It's just you have two former head coaches at the Group of Five level who are having success and come in to be the co-DCs for, for the Crimson Tide this year. What are they working with, and what are the biggest areas where the, the Tide are trying to improve as they look ahead to the fall? Kalen DeBoer said so much today that because um, the question was asked, you know, the, the portal opens up officially for football on Monday. And so he was asked, hey. I think it's Tuesday. Oh, is it Tuesday? Okay, I knew yeah, it was next it week. Was, it was Monday, and that was kind of published, and that day got thrown out. But it's Tuesday, April 16th is when it officially opens. But, of course, right. announcements are right now. Look, I hadn't been right since the time change, so <laughs> give me. But um, so the portal's going to open up then. And look, there are all these rumors that it's going to be absolutely chaotic, right? Josh Pate, who does a great job on his podcast, he has basically said, y'all aren't ready for what's coming. And I don't know if that means good or bad things for Alabama. It's probably a mixture of both, frankly. Um, but I think a lot of things are going to happen on that day. And Kalen DeBoer was asked about it after the practice, his 14th practice today. And um, he was asked, and, and he said, "Yeah, I think we're probably going to be looking for somebody. We're young in the defensive backfield. They got some. They got some dudes. I mean, Jalen Mbakwe. That's another one that I absolutely love. Speed for days. Very physical. Played a lot of quarterback in high school because he was the best best athlete on a very very good team that won a state championship. Beat Ryan Williams' team, by the way, for a state championship. But um, and then Zabian Brown is another one. Uh, you've got uh, Damani Jackson coming in from uh, USC." And uh, I think he's going to be fantastic. But again, you have a, all the guys I've mentioned either don't have a ton of experience or they don't at least have a ton of experience playing in the Southeastern Conference. So it wouldn't shock me if they went out and tried to get another defensive back or two. Yeah, also, I, I think Caleb Downs, it should be noted. Right. Downs, of course, transferred to uh, Ohio State and is one of their best defensive players. But I like that Damani Jackson addition a lot because that's a guy who has immense physical traits and was coaching under someone at USC or was learning under a coach at USC who we all agree should not have been a coordinator at, at that particular position. So you give him a competent staff like what Alabama has, I think he can turn into an all-conference caliber player. Maybe not right away, but certainly a, as he's you know incorporated into a scheme that is, I'm sorry, USC fans, competent, and I don't think Trojan fans would even be mad at me for saying that, I think Damani Jackson has got a lot of potential. Those are the biggest things to watch for in Alabama spring game. It is tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern on uh, ESPN. You can check it out. Luke Robinson, check him out at uh, Locked on Bama. Luke, thanks for stopping by. Thank you for having me. The best quarterback conference last year was the Pac-12, RIP. This year, it's the Big 12, and I'll tell you why. Before we talk quarterbacks, let's talk eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. 
The Big 12 isn't better than the SEC at much of anything, except the number of quality quarterbacks in the league who I know are going to be quality quarterbacks. I mean, they lose in the recruiting battles, they lose in the on-field performance, number of national championship contenders, number of playoff contenders, number of bids that the league will get. I mean, they're, they're behind, but yet somehow, some way, the Big 12 is the best quarterback conference in America. Did you know that there are eight guys, eight guys who I can confidently say will be productive, above average, at least, at least above average quarterbacks and give you enough production from that position to help you win games? Eight guys in the Big 12. Let me read them to you right here. This is in no particular order. Shadur Sanders, Noah Fafita, Jalen Daniels, Jalen Daniels, good football player, kind of a veteran quarterback at this stage. Speaking of veteran quarterbacks, Cam Rising at Utah, remember him? He's back. KJ Jefferson, he's at UCF. They're a member of the Big 12, don't forget. Avery Johnson at Kansas State. Look, he's the most unproven of the bunch. I've got pretty high hopes for him. I think that his potential with Chris Kleiman and company is pretty immense. You've got Garrett Green back at West Virginia. Do you remember how many games the Mountaineers won last year? Maybe you should go look it up. And Baron Morton at Texas Tech, who I also believe in. And I've seen a larger sample size of those guys who are younger and less experienced than I have the younger, less experienced guys in the SEC. And that's one of the reasons I think that the Big 12 is the best quarterback conference in all of college football. And what that's going to lead to is the Big 12 being arguably the most entertaining conference in the country, because I've argued this for a while as well. The Big 12 is not as top heavy as the ACC. And in the quarterback realm, you can argue it's not as top heavy either. There aren't as many NFL draft prospects in that group of guys that I just listed as there are in the SEC. No arguments there. But like the ACC, the depth is stronger. The questions are fewer about what you're going to get from that position. So if you look at the SEC, Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, those guys are at the top. For my money, those are the two best quarterbacks in college football in the entire country. You got Brady Cook at Missouri. You have Jalen Milrow at Alabama, Jackson Dart at Ole Miss. That's a, that's a very good quarterback league. Make no mistake about it. And then after that, you go to some big time names in the SEC school wise and some big brands and teams that have high hopes and they're pinning them on young guys, whether that's Jackson Arnold at Oklahoma, Nico Oyama Leava at Tennessee, Garrett Nussmeyer at LSU. I mean, these are guys who are going to play pivotal roles, not just for their teams, but in the SEC title picture. Each one of those teams I just listed have SEC title aspirations. And if they don't get enough from the quarterback position, well, someone else is going to beat you. Because between Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, or Jalen Milrow, one of those guys is going to be playing in the SEC title game. There is no world in which Georgia, Alabama, and Texas are all left out of the SEC championship game. It's just not going to happen. So if you want to be at that sort of level, and you're a fan of an SEC team, you know what you have to expect? You know what you have to get from the quarterback position? You have to be able to get above average play. It doesn't have to be Heisman level. It doesn't have to be at the level of a Carson Becker, a Quinn Ewers, when those guys are at the top of their games. But you can't have a sizable gap right there. So I see a lot more questions with guys as you go down the list in the SEC. And I think the SEC, best conference in America, I think it's going to be a good quarterback league. It is a good quarterback league. It, it is clearly number two but the Big 12 to me is number one. And that's what makes the Big 12 a really, really fun league for, for 2024. The competitive depth and balance. You have the longest title odds for a betting favorite in that conference of all the Power Four leagues. They're all plus 300 or worse. You've got a plus 200 or even a plus 100 in that sort of range in every other conference. In the ACC, you have Florida State and Clemson under plus 300. In the SEC, Georgia is a pretty sizable favorite over there. In the Big Ten, you've got both Oregon and Ohio State. Ohio State is less than plus 200 as a conference favorite. And for those who understand how the betting market and everything works, that's a pretty sizable amount of confidence that Vegas has got in the Buckeyes there. And guess what? They've earned it. They've, uh, they, they've earned it. Talked about the quarterback questions that they have on yesterday's show. But one of the reasons I think you can look at Ohio State and Oregon in the Big Ten and say, 
hey, we feel really good about these guys as the two favorites going into this year. They've got the fewest quarterback questions. You know, Drew Aller at Penn State, good football player, good quarterback. There's a legitimate question there. Can he take that next step? Can they push the ball down the field consistently? They've brought in a new offensive coordinator. They bring in Julian Fleming from Ohio State to, in theory, help with that, help out with all that sort of stuff. But we don't know how that's going to play out. That's not a proven commodity. That's a question, not a doubt, but a question. A very important distinction to make here to avoid pissing people off in the comment section. So I think that for Ohio State and Oregon, they have the two surest commodities at quarterback. You've got Dylan Gabriel, who is one of the most experienced players in the history of college football and was very good for Oklahoma last year, led him to a Ted Wynn season. I think he's got an even better team that he's working with at Oregon. You have Will Howard probably going to be the starter at Ohio State. He's an Ohio State quarterback. Of course he's going to produce. Of course he's going to be good. And then after that in the Big Ten, you have Drew Aller and you might have Dylan Rayola at Nebraska. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. There is a world in which either true freshman Dylan Rayola or essentially a freshman Aiden Childs at Michigan State, one of those guys could be the fourth best quarterback in the conference. Would that be the case in the Big 12? No, because there's too much veteran experience there. You look at what Shador Sanders did last year. His numbers, listen to this. ESPN put together their list of uh, top 10 quarterbacks. I think Shador Sanders is too low. He's at number eight. I'd have him higher. Okay, listen to these numbers last year. 3,200 passing yards, 27 touchdown passes, three interceptions. He only had a quarterback rating of 63.1. Do you know why his quarterback rating wasn't higher? The fact that he only threw three interceptions is nothing short of a miracle because that's one of the worst power five offensive lines in recent memory. They were so overwhelmed against any team that had a competent front. Go watch the Oregon game, the UCLA game. UCLA was a seven and five team last year with a mediocre to below average offense and a really good defense. And they had a great defensive front. They won that game against Colorado solely on the back of their front four. Shador Sanders had no time to throw. And they've revamped the offensive line. That's been a huge point of emphasis for Shadur Sanders or for Deion Sanders, rather, and the Buffs this offseason, as it should be. But if those are the numbers that he puts up with no offensive line, what's going to happen when he has just an average unit up there? You tell me. If they execute in that area, he's going to put up crazy good numbers because he's got a really good receiving core. Yeah, you know about Travis Hunter, but they've got other guys in there. It's going to be very, very interesting to watch. But the Big 12, I, I think this is just going to be a wildly entertaining conference. And it certainly won't all be about the playoff, right? A lot of fan bases are going to have that, you know, kind of eye towards the future. And what are the implications? I'm sure I'll talk about them here on the show. But is there a national championship winning team in the Big 12? No, I don't think so. Does that stop the Big 12 from being the most entertaining league? No, I don't think it does. Because when you have this quality of quarterback play, you get what the Pac-12 had last year, which was an incredibly entertaining league. And Washington rose above the rest. You know why? Because they had the best quarterback. And Caleb Williams is the best NFL quarterback. But last year, Michael Penix was better. He was in New York City. So was Bo Nix. Caleb Williams was not. So I, I think that for I, I, I think that for, for the Big 12, with the new teams they have brought in, right? Shadur Sanders at Colorado, Noah Fafita at, at Arizona. You could see a young guy like Jaden Rashada down at Arizona State with Kenny Dillingham maybe pop this year. You set up a year in which you are going to have the most Big 12 year of all Big 12 years. I haven't even mentioned every quarterback in the conference in the conference that'll be good or that'll start. I'm sure people in the comment section will let me know, you're sleeping on this guy and that guy. I very well could be. These are just the guys who in my head stand out as, yep, those guys are going to give you above average quarterback play. And I feel very confident in saying that. There are not a lot of leagues that go eight deep in that realm. It doesn't happen very often. The Pac-12 did it last year, and guess what? The Pac-12 was very entertaining, went out with a bang. And I think the Big 12, led by these great veteran quarterbacks with some really good coaches, are going to put on one heck of a show in 2024. None of them will be win will be hoisting a national championship trophy when the season comes to a close. 
But in the lead up towards getting the Big 12's de facto automatic college football playoff berth, it is going to be really fun to watch. And I think there are a lot of different teams that can make, make a push. And the balance and depth of quarterbacks, it's a big reason why. Josh Pate thinks the looming transfer portal window is going to be the craziest we've ever seen. What does that mean? Here's what I mean when I say you should check out Game Time, and that's that, well, you should just check out Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on Game Time actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch, not up, down. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports concerts, comedy, theater, whatever you want, and you can save with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So Josh Pate thinks that this is going to be the craziest transfer portal window that we've ever seen. You're going to have something that you've never felt, experienced, and so many things are going to be changed and altered. I think he's wrong, partially. I think what he means to say is this will be the craziest spring transfer portal window you have ever seen. Might I remind you how many quarterbacks moved this offseason? Think about that fact for just a moment. How many quarterbacks are on teams this year where they're expected to start that they were not on last year? Remember, Julian Sayan is at Ohio State. He was recruited in the 2024 cycle to Alabama. Caden Proctor transferred back to Alabama after going to Iowa, starting at Alabama, and then went and kind of you know took Iowa's NIL money and then went back to Alabama again. Will Howard from Kansas State to Ohio State. Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma to Oregon. Riley Leonard from Duke to Notre Dame. Malik Murphy from Texas to Duke. Cam Ward from Washington State to the NFL draft. Sorry, to the portal, to the NFL draft, to back to the portal, then to Miami. I've only just begun listing the number of quarterbacks. There is no position more singularly impactful that you can get out of the transfer portal than a quarterback. So I think it could be the craziest spring portal window we've seen. His contention is that based on the intel he's heard and coaches he's talked to, and look, I like Josh Pate a lot. He is talking to people higher up far more often than I am. But what he's talking about is a spring portal window that is going to have a lot more starters on the move, but you're not going to see the level of quarterback movement. The number of players that have gone into the transfer portal over the last several years has gone up every year. To now it's over 3,200 for, for the cycle. It might even, I think that was last year's number. And I think that that is, is an insane number to think about. Thousands and thousands and thousands of college football players going to find new homes. But quarterback movement is going to be minimal. But as I talked about on yesterday's show, I don't think it's going to be zero. Most teams by now have got their quarterbacks in place. Does everybody? No. There are quarterback battles all over the country. Whether you're talking about the group of five level, whether you're talking about the Big Ten, the the the, the Big 12, like the, there are teams that are not certain or could improve their standing with a quarterback. And a guy like a Devin Brown, Lincoln Keenholz, or I don't know, Aaron Nolan, I've seen crazier things happen. One of those guys, there are five starting caliber quarterbacks in Ohio State's room. I think at least one will be in the portal by Tuesday. That'll be the craziest announcement because historically, and it's a brief history to be sure, you have not seen starting quarterbacks move in this spring window. You've seen some quarterbacks move, but you haven't seen the volume that you get during the early transfer portal window. And, you know, you know I, I could go on a whole long rant about how dumb the college football calendar is and the schedule is just so broken and 
it, it's it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for anybody. It doesn't make any sense for coaches. It doesn't make any sense for players. It doesn't make any sense for personnel staff. It doesn't make any sense for fans. There's not doesn't make any sense for the sport. There's no logic to it whatsoever. But this is the world that you've got. And, you know, another guy that Pate talked about on a show was, well, Hugh Freeze has talked about, you know, increasing the, the, the number of guys that he's got on the defensive line, trying to go out and attack that particular position. Well, those sorts of guys could come available. And maybe we'll see a higher volume. Bear Alexander, by the way, speaking of defensive linemen, he's not in the transfer portal per his own report. It was circulating that he was going to enter. And, and then he came out and said, nope, not doing that. Staying at USC. Make of that what you will. But certainly, when you look at that transfer portal window opening on Tuesday, you'll have players that don't like where they stand in spring football. But are you going to have a bevy of all-conference caliber players? I'd be surprised. I'll come on here and eat crow if I'm wrong. But I, I would be surprised if you have got legitimate all-conference caliber, caliber guys just leaving programs here and there. Because at the very least, you're not going to have the quarterbacks figured out. But as spring football plays out, it, it is certainly difficult to be a coach and not know whether or not this guy is going to stick around or whether or not he's going to put his name in the transfer portal. And, and I, I'm sure that several teams will be surprised, but... To say by the you know guys that, that that enter here and there, but are you going to see a mass exodus? Remember what was happening at Alabama when Kalen DeBoer first got on the scene? Nobody was sticking around, right? They had a high school commit in Ryan Williams, who of course later recommitted. He decommitted, and Caleb Downs left, and Seth McLaughlin left, and Caden Proctor left, and they had all sorts of players. Isaiah Bond he left as well. A lot of guys were departing. Nye Black, the tight end, everybody was leaving Alabama. What major blue blood program is going to have an exodus like that? I can't see that happening. I can see an impact player leaving a school of note. I can see guys departing who, you know, you would think are going to be starters, but actually are going to start somewhere else because they've got a better offer or what have you. This is this is gut feeling from me. This is this is this is pure gut feeling here. But when you look at the number of players that have already moved, and sure, guys like Caden Proctor have shown us that you can move and you know think about moving, whether or not he actually thought about moving and whatnot. But um, or sorry, I just crossed up Caden Proctor and Bear Alexander. How about that? Caden Proctor moved and then he removed. Okay, that was crazy. That was wild. Talked about it on the show. Don't like what that means for where the state of our sport is. Because you had a university in Iowa that was ready to line up resources and invest and commit to having Proctor be a part of their football program, and then he's able to just double back on him. That's, that, 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 that's not a healthy sport. That's not a healthy arrangement. That's not something that is conducive to fostering the sort of environments that you know are, are best for coaches, players, fans, and the sport writ large. So... If you have a guy who can do that, sure, you could have a couple other guys, but what position does Proctor play? Offensive line. Important position. There, there, there's no doubt about it. That is an important position. You will never see me underselling the importance of offensive line. But there is not going to be. Here's my prediction. And this differs from the early portal window and why I think there is a difference between what craziness in the spring portal window and what craziness in the winter transfer portal window really means. How many times did you see in that early transfer window a quarterback's name go into the portal and you think, uh-oh, we got a problem, or that school over there, they've got a problem? Probably more than a few. You can think of a lot of different examples where you go, well, that leaves major questions. The impact of a starting caliber quarterback going from one team to uh, a conference foe or one team to uh, another conference and helps make that team a, a contender of sorts. Like take Oregon, for instance. Can they land a transfer who is singularly as impactful as Dylan Gabriel is going to be for them? Not even close. Not, not even close. So I think most of the big time transfers have already made their move. And as you go forward in spring, 
We're going to be covering extensively here on Locked On College Football because you will see impact players on the move. But will it, will it be as hectic as that initial portal window when it felt like everybody and their mother was in the transfer portal? No, I don't think it will rise to that level. There will be plenty to cover, and we will talk about all the impact players here on Locked On College Football because there will be some. But craziest transfer portal window that you've ever seen? I have my doubts. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.